Welcome to All Points North. This is Tackling Stigma with Dr. Romano. My co-host, I've got Marcus Smith right over here. What's happening? What's going on? How are you doing? We are here. <laughs> I'm happy. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> We're having a great day today, right? That's right. I feel recharged. Nice. Yeah. Recharged. Yep. What was going on that you needed to recharge? Well, first, I seen my guy right here <laughs> oh you mean this guy right here this guy Who, who's this yeah. guy to Who your this left guy? Who's this guy <laughs> came from the dead <laughs> <laughs> and look at him now oh uh, man two feet five toes down miss t <laughs> five toes well ten toes down i messed it up ten toes down so, uh-huh yes ma'am well i'm glad you're alive yes i usually start there for my day like i just people ask me how are you i'm alive uh-huh. I, I start there Okay. And we'll see we'll see what the day see what the day brings me. Nice. So this alive guy that we've got with us here today <laughs> in the middle of Marcus and I, Mr. Zach Stacy. Hello. Mm-hmm. Hello. Hello. Mm-hmm. How are you, Miss T? I, I I always love asking that cuz I mean just to hear your answer after I ask how are you, it just uh it fills me up. It fills me up. Because I'm only going to give you the truth, right? Of course. Absolutely. Of course. Of course. Yeah. And authenticity. And authenticity. Of course. Yes. The authentic answer and how am I doing? Incredible. Nice. Incredible. You nice. know, I'm feeling nice. a little exhausted, a mm. little tired, but I think, you know, I get to spend some time with you two right here. Mm-hmm. That's recharging. Right? Recharging. Yeah. And I think that's what we're going to kind of look at today. You know, tackling stigma, tackling the stigma of mental health. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I definitely, I had, what, two earlier today. And I was kind of like a, in a brain fog. Mm-hmm. Um, I do have TMJ, so I deal with that, right? I went, got a workout in, uh-huh. got in the sauna, took a shower, felt really good. And now I got my second win, right? Being able to do that was freeing for me. Felt, you know, we talked about this before. It just feels good when you get a good workout in. It don't even got to be. Nothing crazy. You just need to sweat. Right. Just need to sweat. Good sweat, sauna, sitting there. It just, it put me in the mind of what I used to do when I was here. Mm-hmm. And that's a great feeling. That's a great place to be. Mm-hmm. Right. Really understand. And I used to cry a lot too when I would be by myself. So it kind of gave me that, that, that feeling. You know, when you hear a song that you haven't heard in a while, oh, and then yeah. you hear it and it's like, oh man, it brings back stuff stuff back up that's kind of how it felt so yeah i'm recharged ready to go ready to talk about tackling stigma nice there it is, there it is. so you asked me how i was doing how about you zach how are you doing i am grounded i learned that from miss brandy uh-huh. i love that word very grounded, grounded. very grounded very content and i'm just where my feet are right now mm-hmm. where my feet are so um i wish the uh elevation wouldn't have messed up my sinuses right now as I sound a little clogged up, but I'm here, but I'm here. So I think this is a good opportunity, you know what I'm saying, to kind of have some deep, deep dialogue, mm-hmm. deep, deep dialogue. So it's, it's, it's been a pleasure, been, been a pleasure being back, been very nostalgic, like Marcus uh, mentioned. So, uh, but yeah, I'm just glad to be in your presence, Miss T. It's been two years. I know, you, it's you, been a long time. Yeah, you can check on the brother from time to time. I know you're busy, but I'd be missing you. Oh, oh no, no, no. I have <laughs> dropped a line here and there. <laughs> so don't try and turn I, it back on no, me. No, no. Hey. Let me tell you something. I, I seen Miss T in action now. Uh, I got to sit in the meeting. <laughs> She's fierce. I ain't gonna, she probably one of the coolest people you'll meet in the meeting for sure. Uh-huh. But seeing her in action like that is like, all right, we know who the boss is in here. Yeah, Miss T always been the boss. She's always been the boss, so. That's oh where. gosh, am I turning red yeah, now? Yeah, you should. You oh, should. Oh God, here should. we go. Look at you too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Oh man. So, tackling the stigma, of mental health. Right. It's been a couple years. Mm-hmm. I'm going to start with you, Zach. Um, what has the last couple years been like for you since <laughs> leaving? A, you said deep, right? Yeah. We're not going to. We're yeah, going to go fine. right no, in, let's, let's, right? You know whatever what you're comfortable and with, I, whatever it may be. And I can't swim, but I got my life jackets oh, around me. So there we go. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but uh, the last two years have been uh, 
been a bit of a roller coaster. Um, obviously, with all do you know, with all things considered, but uh, the last two years has also been a, a evolution of growth. Uh, it's been an evolution of you know, obviously perseverance and fatherhood. You know, fatherhood has been a bit pillar, you know, in my life, and that's kind of been a good balance for me for my mental health too, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? You know, having that, you know, responsibility and that routine as as far as, you know, uh, scheduling and stuff like that, you know, Marcus can attest to this, you know, we're creatures of habits being former pro players. So, yep. Yep. so with that being said, just the last two years, just been a little, little bit of a transitional period, but, you know, I mentioned this, you know, um, you know, yesterday in the pod and, you know, as much turmoil emotionally mentally physically that i've been through you know it's been so so much good that has, has has come uh from that and you know which is why i've always been preaching to you know people who ask me how i'm doing where my feet are and mm-hmm. i'm grateful where my feet are you know yeah. what I'm, saying? I'm grateful to be in the space that i am with in the space of gratitude uh space of peace love uh and i just want to continue that you know keep sharpening the tools so that you know not only i can be the best father i can be be the best man, be mm-hmm. the best man. So yeah. that's 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 kind of just been my focus, you know, yeah. just tackling this transitional period, but all the while staying on top of fatherhood too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm I'm curious because you know we talk about and I think we you know we look at this experience, strength, and hope, right? And where you're at today mm-hmm. is not where you've always been. Of course not. Yeah. Correct. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, in the series when we look at you know tackling this stigma of mental health, right? as ex-pro players in the NFL and we talked a little bit about this the other day that you know we have to remain silent sometimes and that silence can be really dark Mm -hmm. and lonely you know so you know before your journey started what was you know mental health whether as you know in your athleticism where you were at what was that like for you you know, my mental health journey, my emotional wellness journey started in 2021. You know, uh, prior to that, um, it's kind of like one of those things where you just, you know, you just don't know. Like, you don't know what you're feeling. And mm-hmm. for the longest time, I dealt with anxiety, you know, mm-hmm. prior to me coming to ATN back in 2021. Then the anxiety kind of turned into depression. And then it turned into some, some even darker stuff. So I, one of the biggest things that, I always try to, you know, going back because, you know, I get this question all the time as far as like, you know, when did your mental health, you know, journey, emotional wellness journey started. But, you know, it, it started, you know, obviously here, APN, because the biggest thing, like I was telling Marcus the other day, is is, is no different than, you know, ball, uh, baseball per se. You know what I'm saying? You get drafted, you start off in the minor leagues, mm-hmm. double A in particular. And my double A was having the acceptance and awareness of this stuff. Along with oh, the opportunity, look along, at that. Was, look at that, yeah. <laughs> it's a bar. Along with the opportunity, hey. along with the opportunity too, because you know, it's a pleasure. It's a you know, it's such a experience, whether it's good or bad, coming here. But a lot of people don't have the opportunity to do that. A lot of people don't have the opportunity to navigate their mental health or whatnot. So. I'm a big believer in that as well. Just having the opportunity to do that because you know you have some people who have you know mental health uh issues emotional wellness issues but they don't know how to tackle it no pun intended um taken. <laughs> in terms <laughs> of um you know having the awareness of like what exactly am i feeling so mm-hmm. i think just those two um attributes of mental health the acceptance acceptance and awareness i think it, it has it had to start there for, particularly for me and obviously i'm just speaking on my experience can't speak for nobody else in their journey but once I, you know, got that uh, concept now, I didn't really learn the skill set off, you know, off the top, but I, I really had to, and it, you know, as far as that skill set with acceptance and awareness, you know, that's a skill set that takes time. So, mm-hmm. and I'm still trying to perfect it along with other things we can talk about, you know, with the boundary setting and stuff like that. But, you know, no different than ball, you know, this mental health, you know, aspect is, is their skill sets required. You know, mm-hmm. and if you you're not if they're not sharpened, if they're not, you know, effective, you know, no, I can honestly say that shit can land your ass in jail. You know, what I'm saying <laughs> like it did me. So, mm-hmm. um, so I just really try to, you know, people because I got people in my circle that you know, 
are navigating this too. You know what I'm saying? They look look to me for, uh, I guess, a liaison for the mental health, which is fine. I don't take it personally, but at the end of the day, I just, you know, really always talk about, you know, you got to be aware inside, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, and I just, that's just kind of where my mental health started. Right. So can you talk a little bit about, you know, was there something pivotal in your life or something that said, you know what, I need help? before you came to APN? Because, you know, I think all of us sometimes, you know, some of those, you know, who's sitting out here watching and, you know, and seeing, you know, you're talking a lot about the journey of recovery. You're talking about this gratitude that you have. You're talking Mm -hmm. about, you're talking about the change, right? Mm -hmm. But you also said there's an acceptance, right? So was there something, was there an event? Was there, you know, any pivotal point that said, pick up that phone, call, I need help? I think the crazy thing is, Miss T, you know, and you don't know this, but I'm going to share it with you because it, it involves you. Uh-oh. So, uh, oh, good thing. So, you know, obviously, you know, when I came here, I was tackling a little bit of anxiety and depression or whatnot. Mm-hmm. After the incident, you know, happened, uh, you we had we you called me, you, you know, so we had a conversation. And one of the things that you said was, when it came to the emotional regulation, you told me, you know, we didn't attack this. We didn't talk about this when we was on the mountain. And I really wanted to cry my eyes out when you said that, cause there was a little bit of like disappointment and like from you uh, towards me in a sense. It wasn't, but that's just how I felt at the time. Cause I mean, it was fresh off the incident. And that made me realize I'm, I may have more problems than I realized whether somebody brought it out of me or wherever the case may be. And being able to have the work that we were been able to do, you know, along with you and a lot of, a lot of other advocates, you know, on my side, you know, there was a lot of inner child stuff that had to be recognized, you know what I'm saying? And I think if we're going to talk about a, a stem, a foundation, I can definitely say, you know, absence of my dad played, played a big part in that as well. Um, I relate that to my father because, you know, at the end of the day, you know, he wasn't around, but, you know, he was, he was around, but he wasn't there. And Mm -hmm. there's, there's a difference. Mm -hmm. So with that, you know, my parents got divorced when I was six years old. So there wasn't, there wasn't no Chuck E. Cheese for me. There wasn't no um, going to the movies or playing with kids. I I had a little brother with Down syndrome, mom working all day, you Mm -hmm. know? So my role from child to man of the house happened at a a very young age yeah so and there wasn't a lot of emotions you know what i'm saying involved in my household i was telling marcus i I probably seen my mom quite cry like twice so a little bit of a you know emotionally delayed uh but never thought that would be like you know the bit bit foundation of like the navigation that needs to be done when it came to my mental health journey because again you know even though it's kind of generalized, you know, we can talk about anxiety and depression all day, Mm -hmm. but that emotional piece, you Mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Obviously due to all things considered, that's that's when it was like, yeah, you know, like I said, regardless if somebody, and and, and there's no justification as far as my actions, you know that we already talked about this, but you know, whether it's somebody that can bring the worst out of you or what is just, you know, something that you haven't navigated inside it was something that had to be done. And quite frankly, I don't think that task of navigating my emotional wellness came on the first time. Cause you know, for the, you know, disclaimer, I've been to APN three times looking for safety, looking for, uh, help, looking for any type of, you know, finger pointing in the right direction, whatever you want to call it. So, um, but it definitely took, you know, that second time coming here to really, you know, throughout the, you know, despite the turmoil and everything, you know, in the media news or whatever the case may be, it was like, okay, it's, this is serious now. I, I think I have some issues that I really need to navigate. So, mm-hmm. yeah. 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 What are your thoughts over there? I see you shaking and. You know, yeah. I love it when <clears throat> we can have the candid conversation mm-hmm. and we can go through our testimonies in our lives and that's what makes us up makes us who we are yeah right um i talked a little bit about it yesterday 
I don't believe in burying somebody in the sand, right? Because I know where I was, right? I know how I felt when I got drafted first round and the fans booed me, right? I'm just a kid coming from Louisville living out his dream, but I wasn't the pick that everybody wanted, right? Mm -hmm. They wanted a receiver, right? They wanted somebody else and I wasn't that guy. So I was already walking into a hostile environment and walking around a city that I felt like um, I didn't have any peace. Like I was scared to talk to people. I was scared to show people who I was or let people know who I was. You know, if somebody see you on a, you know, on the sidewalk, you automatically think like, oh, they think I suck. Or you don't you don't want to be around people because you're not you may not be playing as well as you as you want to play, and they expect more out of you. So mm-hmm. I think all of that coupled by my parents getting a divorce when I was eight, right? Not really understanding the emotional side, right? Because my father rarely cried, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I rarely seen my mom cry as well. But seeing my parents go through what they went through, right? And I never blame neither one of them, but it did something to me, it did something to my sister that it was hard for me to describe until I got in a therapy room, until a therapist brought me all the way back to who I was as a, as a kid, as, as eight. And I'm like, dang, I ain't never talked about this, right? Mm-hmm. So when you think about what led me and my journey to come to, when I, when I came to APM, it all came to a head in Seattle, right? Suicide attempt. And I, I mean, that's as plainly as I can say it, right? Just signed a one-year deal, <coughs> 2.7 mm-hmm. mil, right? One year, like, hey, my career is finally going in the right direction, but there's one thing that is holding me back, my mental health. Like, I'm not addressing that. So how can I be the the very best football player I could be if I'm not mentally fit? Right, mm-hmm. we always yeah. we always do everything backwards, right? It's like physical, physical. Uh, you know, our, you know, we train, we train, and we're we're putting our bodies through this stress. But what are we doing for the mentality? Like, what are we doing for our <laughs> our mental stability for the season or to get ready for what we're about to go through? We just, I think, we push that to the side because that's not something that the coaches or anybody wanted to talk about. So it came to a head. And uh, when I finally said I needed help pushing forward to 2021, Mm -hmm. this place changed my life. Changed my eyes. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Changed my eyes. Like really changed my life because I had to do the work. And I was just coming just to come like, hey, well, it's whatever. I'm coming. Mm-hmm. But like you said, when I got in the room and I seen, <laughs> right, or, um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, who else? Who else was in there with us? It was, it was a lot of it was a lot of guys in there with us. But <coughs> OK, my bad. You're good. You're good. They'll get bleeped out. Um <laughs> But, you know, it was a locker room feel. That's all I'm mm-hmm. trying to say. Yeah. Um, and that's what allowed me to open up. And that was the start of my journey. And finding out who the real Marcus Smith was. Find out what my purpose was. And y'all know, like, when I left APN, I went circle of M. Whew, I'm taking this. I'm running with it. And, look, I got to, just like how I was saved, I got to save other guys. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. That's yeah. what brought me. I know that was a lot. Sorry, you guys. No, that's okay. No, that was, I mean, I'm I'm looking at it kind of like almost like the LeBron effect, you know what I'm saying, in terms of what, you know, not necessarily just with mental health, but a lot of things that a lot of athletes in particular don't necessarily, not going to say get to talk about or, you know, almost like the shut up and dribble effect. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, 
imagine if LeBron James came out and said, you know, obviously he's on his last leg, but five years ago he's, you know, I'm stepping away from basketball for my mental health. Do you think a lot of people would be more intrigued to see what's going on then? Yeah. So it's almost like the person. And I, as as far as you being a first-round draft pick, playing yeah. for, you know, one of the best franchises, you know, in the league with Philly, you know what I'm saying, for you to step away to have that awareness and accept that I need help, just like you just said, as soon as you left APN, you just propelled. Yeah. Same with me. Yeah. Took me a couple times, but <laughs> same, same, yeah. same with me. And it, what ta- it takes. Yes. And it takes. And it right? takes time. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because yeah. one of the biggest, you know, uh, one thing you touched on, Marcus, was like one of the biggest things that I regret selfishly was, well, unselfishly per se, was putting my mental health aside, putting my emotional wellness aside for my son. Yeah, Miss T, you was there. Mm-hmm. Miss T, I mean, as far as the the BS, yeah. Miss T saw everything. Yeah, it's almost it's almost like she she saw the she saw the building collapsing before it happened. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And that's why me and T, me and Miss T have a good relationship because it was just it was just so unfortunate that a precious moment like my son being born was not necessarily stripped stripped away, but it could have been more memorable because I wasn't in that most healthiest spot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. and that's the, that's the thing, man. That's the ultimate sacrifice when it comes to this journey, man. You, you really have to sacrifice people you love, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Cause we can even go, you know, dive into the culture thing as far as mental health, you know, you know, mental health is not talked about in the black community. Oh boy, you'll be fine. Tough enough. You know what I'm saying? And obviously football didn't help either because you definitely can't talk about anything related, you know, in that field. And it's almost, you know, counterintuitive, you know, you talked about how, you know, just how important it was, you know what I'm saying, or the lack of importance that led you to your, you know, led you to you making that transition and focus on your mental health. For me, being on that field was just, it was my escape from reality. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. imagine having that taken away I'm 22, 23 years old, having to retire because do- doctors are telling you that if you don't get, you know, this surgery, this quality of life surgery, you're gonna be walking with a cane when you're 32. I'm 20, I'm 23 years old. Like, what type of, like, what am I supposed to do? I mean, Miss T, just for the transparency, you know, I'm sure you hear this all the time about players. You know, make sure you have a plan B. Make sure you have a plan B. Ain't nobody thinking about a plan B. Not when you're in that bubble. Nobody's thinking about that. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. you trying to you trying to think about how you're gonna get that bag, right? So mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's <laughs> it's it's, it's hard about. to you know it's hard to compartmentalize all that. And I think a lot of players nowadays are getting a little better. The NFL is doing a better job of like promoting mental health and you know trying to bring awareness to it somewhat. <clears throat> but it's just a it's mm-hmm. it's it's such a slippery slope. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's such a slippery slope. Even from the legal side, somebody who experienced that who has put thousands of documents in front of a judge just for him to say, oh, I don't care about that. I'm still going to give you a, give you a year. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's it's those little transitional periods that can definitely make a difference whether the turmoil is going to be effective in the long run or could detriment you in, in the you know long run as well. So Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, and you both talked about quite a bit you know without even saying it right the stigma itself right and the yeah. stigma that is the is the bias the prejudice, the everything that we can't talk about mm-hmm. right we can't have a word we can't advocate we can't can't even look at each other right you've talked about the locker room right now, i've never played ball right but that locker room during while you were playing right was so important correct but yet you couldn't look to the guy to your left or the guy to your right and say, I'm struggling. You couldn't go to your coach and say, I'm struggling with depression. Hmm. Why? Because we didn't know what it looked like. Mm -hmm. We didn't know that, like if you put depression in front of us, Mm -hmm. we'll be like, ah, no, that ain't me. Mm -hmm. Right? There it is, yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I think, what happened 
when you have like if you were sitting in the locker room and all the players, I you know unless a lot of us would be struggling mm-hmm. just off the simple fact of practice, what we got to do. Um, the bathrooms are before practice. Every stall is filled, whether a person is throwing up or taking a dump before practice, mm-hmm. right? Because of the anxiety, you have to go out there and perform at practice, right? Because the eye in the sky, yeah. don't lie. Mm-hmm. Never right? lies. So they are, mm-hmm. are watching your every move, right? Then on top of that, you have somebody coming to interview for your position every single day. Yeah. Tuesday, we have off. We come in, we get in the cold tub. It's somebody interviewing for your position. Right, so I think it, it built like a shield mm-hmm. where all right, look, I ain't got time to think about this. Like I gotta mm-hmm. figure out like how I'ma make this team, how I'ma get this check, how I'ma stay in the league. And that that's what the focus was. So And it's almost like, you know, that the label that came with that. Mm-hmm. You know, where I'm from, if you know, mental health, you know, for are, are you crazy or something? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that that's that label was was kind of put up that shield as well yep. yeah because you know growing up in the black community you know what i'm saying it's you know mental health that label itself is deemed bad mm-hmm. it's deemed like you know what i'm saying you need to go to church or something like that which you know what i'm saying and it's just unfortunate that the signs are all are already there but we don't have the awareness or just like from Anything as simple as taking a poop before practice. That's anxiety itself. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I used to be, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you. Hey, but, that was one of them more. <laughs> and it, it even goes back to, you know, even guys That's like. That's kind of the determining how much is my, if it's a big one, we're a 10. If it's a small one, we're Boy. a 2. Because you, mm, I, you th- keep, and keep if going you, that. But I'm just thinking like, even if you got guys who, are only getting two reps of practice. There's no, there's no room or no margin of error at all. Mm-hmm. If you're only getting two reps of practice in a training camp, your reps got to be absolutely perfect because you might not. I mean, those are the only reps you get. So, and uh, along with guy, you know, I had guys, you know, sleeping out their cars. I mean, it's, it's it's so much. It's so many signs within those walls of the NFL, and it's so counterintuitive that we have to dis- dismiss that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Dismiss it just for the thing that's gonna that puts most guys in that situation, yeah. and that's just unfortunate. You know what I'm saying? The conversation itself is getting better, the awareness is getting better, but it's it's it, there still needs to be a little. There's just something missing. You know what I'm saying? It's mm-hmm. bigger I don't, focus. I, I don't think it's I don't think commercials. You know what I'm saying? Doing the games of mental health and stuff like that. You you can promote it and stuff, but I think it takes a little bit more action. Mm-hmm. Than just okay, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because it's almost feel, uh, no disrespect to the NFL because NFL you know, has created opportunities for me that I thought I never would. But you know they, they it's almost like they just put it in front of us. Just okay, here we're talking about it, so y'all can shut up. We said it. So here we go. Mm-hmm. We got commercials for it. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's you know it, it's it's a really a, a slippery slope, and it as long as you know. The recognition of it, rather than just you know putting it in front of us so it's, so people can see, it, it, it's going to continue to be a super slope. So yeah, yeah. Well, and I think what we're doing right here today, right, um, is talking very openly mm-hmm. and very candidly. Um, but you said something, Marcus, in owning our testimony, mm-hmm. right? Being able to own our testimony and being able to share with another individual, right? Mm-hmm. is how we're breaking or how we're tackling yeah. and, you know, in rupturing what, whether it's society, whether it's culture, whether it's our past or even whether it's our future, mm-hmm. right? And what we're doing today is how we begin to break that stigma of mental health is weak. Yeah, Mental health, you said it, is crazy. Mm-hmm. Mental health we don't talk about that in the black community. We don't talk about that in the in the locker rooms. We don't talk about that with each other. Mm-hmm. But yet here we've got two, right, brave, courageous men 
who have struggled with mental health, who have struggled with depression, who have struggled with suicide, mm -hmm. ideation, thoughts. Even though a contract's there, a thought of wanting to take and end your life, right? Uh, so I was definitely there. Yeah. I was definitely there because, I mean, for, for me, I was in a position, in a space where, you know, um, was pretty much one of the, one of the hated, the most hated man in the country at one, one point. Mm -hmm. You know, I told Marcus there's like the scum of the earth and then there's the shit that's underneath it. That's where I was. Mm -hmm. Along with the possibility that I might not see my son in 15, 20 years. Mm -hmm. Why the fuck should I be here? I have no reason to be here. I have no, you know, um, you know, people, you know, pretty much people, you know, deserted me. Uh, I lost communities. I lost um, resources. Um, so I didn't have pretty much nothing. Mm -hmm. I had nothing. And the only thing that kept me going, I didn't have at that point either, just with my son. I. I, I told these guys like I missed every first with my son. Yeah, I missed my first Thanksgiving with my son. I missed my first Christmas. I was I was here for my son's first Christmas. I was here for my son's first New Year. I wasn't able to. I missed his first birthday. So it was like, why? Sh why exactly should I be here? And I, I planned out my whole suicide attempt and everything. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So to the point where. I was going to Home Depot and looking for rope, you know, and was that before you came to APN or after you left? This was after I left. Mm -hmm. This was during, you know, my bond release. Cause I was pretty much on bond release from December of 21 all the way to 2023. Mm -hmm. And as you know, I, I came, you know, multiple times throughout my bond release. Cause it just, it literally, I thought it would be safe outside mm -hmm. of this mountain. Mm -hmm. It just wasn't, you know what I'm saying? So, but the suicidal ideation is is it's real, it's 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 real, and I I I dealt with that for quite for quite some time because mm -hmm. I thought I literally thought I think it would be best for everyone if I'm not here. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Just I'm not here. You know everything's clean. You know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But it was it was it was really it was, until you're in that space. It's, 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 it can be really dark. It can it can be be really really dark to the point like it felt like I had devil two devils on my shoulder. Do it, do mm -hmm. it, do it. Mm -hmm. Like it was it's it's a scary place to be, scary place to be. But I'm glad I overcame it though. Yeah, yeah. Look at you now. Oh man, look at me my, look at me now. For uh, just. Uh, no stopped up, but here. <laughs> <laughs> My right. God. Now that's the important piece. You're yeah, here, exactly. yeah. right? Because your recovery looked a lot different than Marcus's, right? You yep. guys came through APN, right? And and again, I think I just want to kind of point out again with anybody who's out there watching is when we're struggling, right? And we're in that dark place and we're in that really heavy place, right? I've been there myself, mm -hmm. you know, 20 some. It, it's a it's a horrible place to be it is, right it is. it's very lonely it's very isolating right and how do we tackle this and how do we begin to have conversations right mm -hmm. and not be afraid even to ask the question you know some may be sitting here watching we're talking about death but mm. what we're really talking about is life mm -hmm. right and what that what shifted and what you've done and your recovery looks so different than what Marcus is. And so we just want to remember that, you know, when we start this journey of recovery, you know, first we've got to be able to accept, mm -hmm. to accept that we're struggling, right? And I think that's really hard, whether it's it's a man, whether it's a woman, that's anybody. A, that's why you got to start there. <laughs> right. You have, you have to. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Unless, and, unless you, if you can't accept mm -hmm. that you have problems, then it's going to be an even longer journey. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So. That's, yeah. that's definitely where it starts, Miss T. Yes. And we can't be afraid to talk about it, right? Just what we're doing here today, being able to talk about it, you know, and what that journey was like before we came to APN. And what's more important is what the journey is like after. Of course. Right? Of course. Because it looks so different, and sometimes we've got this anticipation of, oh, I'm going to go to treatment. I'm going to be better. Family says, Marcus, go to treatment, and things will be better. Zach, go to treatment. Things will be better. Mm -hmm. But that journey doesn't always look 
better, does we're, it? We're still on the journey. Right. Bingo. Still, <laughs> right. This is yeah, still work. Still <laughs> very, right. still very much a transitional period for yeah. both of Taught us. Taught so. these guys yeah. well. No. <laughs> nah, really though. It's it's really a a, a place where it's never ending and we have to accept that mm-hmm. as well mm-hmm. that it, it it may be a roller coaster right um to turn away from some of the things that you've dealt with but at the same time long as you are equipped and have the tools to be able to combat some of those things that are a part of you mm-hmm. whether you like it or not mm-hmm. right anxiety has always been a part of my life mm-hmm and it was just something that nobody ever noticed, right? My point, yeah. my, 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 my <laughs> anxiety has been a part of our lives. Yeah, but it's crazy. We didn't know it. Yeah, we didn't know what it looked. I mean, like. my grandma, she put. I had an anxiety. My first anxiety attack was at my grandmother's house. My mom and my dad were on a date, uh-huh. right? She put a blood pressure cuff on me, right? And they was trying to figure out what the heck was going on. I was just having a, a panic attack. Mm-hmm. Didn't know. Uh, matter of fact, I do know. A day before, I was watching John Q. You ever watched? Oh yeah. Him? Oh yeah. And that just gave me crazy anxiety, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then after that was the divorce and stuff like that. But I mean, had no idea. And then when I bring it up to to my father now, my father actually talks a little bit more about. Like, man, I I had no idea, even with myself, mm-hmm. right? So we are breaking, like you said, we're breaking generational curses. We're breaking Bingo. Mm-hmm. the stigma when it comes to athletes. And then people that look up to athletes, I think it's, it's great, too, because now we're breaking your lawyers, your doctors, your, uh, you know, people who, who work – in the construction industry, like everybody deals with something and maybe somebody that you're looking up to, now they're speaking and, and freeing themselves. Oh, maybe I need to speak and free myself. Mm-hmm. And so that's, I feel like that's where we at and that's where we're headed. And the the actual voice and uh, how we speak, I think is gonna continue to grow. Mm-hmm. I think it's gonna get a lot better right because we, there's even if it's one person right i have a, a clip that i posted today with the circle of m and i posted a clip with uh one of the um he's a volleyball player went to ohio state mm-hmm. right me and soul did a, a presentation at the nil summit and uh we had at least seven to eight athletes share their story nice after we spoke (coughs) and it just it gave them a reason to like you know what they wanted the mic and wanted to like hey man i i've I've been through this because we created that space and that's all that's all we need you just want to you just want to know like all right you ain't gonna hold this against me all right (laughs) right you know what i mean right Right. just 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 you know just hear me out i'm not being a punk Mm -hmm. you know i'm Mm -hmm. Listen, I got feelings too, right? <laughs> yes, you do. <did. laughs> I'm not I'm not being a punk, but like, you know, as a man, you like true vulnerability is like showing that that side of you that that is normally not what society looks at as being strong. Like, mm-hmm. bro, we got to cry. I mean, mm-hmm. if we if you don't and there's the stigma, right? That we're yeah. talking about masculinity, right? Right. Going is I'm going down that rabbit hole of vulnerability. I I tend I unfortunately found out I'm not gonna say unfortunately, but to be on that route to personal freedom, mm-hmm. you actually have to have the masculine energy and the feminine energy yeah. at the wow. same time. You really do, you know what I'm saying? Like that's a man who has both of those can can acquire so much, you know what I'm saying? So it's 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 crazy just 
is it's crazy we haven't really even I haven't even opened up about vulnerability because that's a big piece too. Yeah. You know that's what I'm a big piece that's of a your really, part. That's a really that's right? a real big piece. Yeah, it's unfortunate for me because I'm glad you guys are my friends. I don't have a lot of friends to talk about vulnerability. <laughs> yeah. <right? laughs> yeah, but at the end of the day, it's like you know once I mat not really master because you know I haven't really mastered the skill set yet. I mean I'm, I'm in the process, but being able to express that vulnerability. That's that's what made me open up here, because mm-hmm. when I walked in that room, when you had ten plus guys here mm-hmm. navigating the same journey, I'm looking around like, oh shit, oh, you going through that too? Oh, okay, I'm not the only one. Mm-hmm. <sighs> okay, this might not be bad. So mm-hmm. the, the vulnerability piece is, is is something we we don't really overlook it, but we tend to forget how important that is. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because even going back to the awareness. You know, my vulnerability was the awareness pit was that was the awareness itself. Oh, I can be vulnerable. Running back, runs over people, tough all the time, mm-hmm. never smiling. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. So it's I, I can cry. I probably cried more here on this mountain than I ever did. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> that was, you know, my vulnerability definitely opened up, you know, uh in the beginning of my journey, specifically here, mm-hmm. you know, so and once I was able to do that. I was able to articulate what I was feeling. I was able because that's what a lot of guys struggle with too. I don't. Yeah. The it's almost hearing. I don't know what I'm feeling. You know what I'm saying? I always like to hear that because it's like ah, we can tap in deeper. We can I, go. I'm we still can, like that. Yeah, yeah. I still have to sift through. Like ah, I don't even know why. I don't even know why I'm acting like that right mm-hmm. now. You got to. You know? I mean, it's almost like you got to <laughs> learn yourself. You got to learn your tits. You got to learn mm-hmm. what. You gotta learn your triggers. You learn what? Your tits, the things that the it's or what? What oh, they call okay. it? The, the the things that make that, that annoys you. I'm sorry, Miss T. I remember. I'm, I'm a female tr- sitting I'm here trying, with you two men. I'm so try- when yeah. you say tits, I go right there. Well, I think the politic. I think the politic correct term is like it's. You know, yeah. that's what the younger kids say. Yeah. Like, okay. Give yeah. me the ick. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, but uh, but yeah, vulnerability is a big piece though. But but also mm-hmm. redefining what masculinity is too. Oh. Mm. Right. Yes. Because mm. even even though like here, yeah. you you talking about the the you talk about the feminine energy, right? Mm-hmm. But you know, society what have we've been taught is like boys don't cry, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But a, a a true masculine man cries. You know what I mean? So to me, like we have to redefine what that really is and what that looks like because it's not what society portrays it to be. Mm-hmm. You know, and so that's kind of how I think of it. Like, if I need to, I let it go, right? Mm-hmm. And I, I'm not ashamed of it mm-hmm. anymore because it's not. I don't want to be in a place where um, I feel like I'm full, but it's a it's 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 like you're you're full and you're heavy, and I can't let anything go. Mm-hmm. And then you you'll you'll catch yourself like. Even when it's time to cry, you have to, it's almost like you got to tell yourself, like, just do it, bro. Come on, dog. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because you you just learn how to, like, nah, uh, I ain't going to. That ain't me. Like, yeah, And that's the process yeah. of tackling and breaking the yeah. stigma, right? We have our own personal biases in our mm-hmm. belief systems, right? Yeah. We even have culture. values based around our culture that men don't cry. Men yeah. is not supposed to show, you know. And that's not always, but what that signal and what that communication is, right? That vulnerability is a weakness, Mm -hmm. right? Right. So then we have to be, and again, not a man, but we have to be a strong man, right? I got to carry the world on my shoulder. Mm -hmm. I can't cry. I can't let anybody see that I'm struggling, right? But what I'm hearing you guys say, that vulnerability now to you is a strength. Mm -hmm. And, and that's how we begin breaking, right, the stigma and those biases, whether it's current day or past day, because you've got a son, right? Of course, yeah. Yes, and you've got two children, yeah, right? And so being able to communicate and show them what vulnerability is about, yeah, that it's a strength that we have. And by doing that, it creates kind of this shift of being – not a strong man, but a man of strength. Mm-hmm. That a man of strength pulls through connection. Because mm-hmm. that's what you two have been talking about, right? And this is how we break and we tackle <coughs> the stigma of mental health. And we learn to connect with one another, mm-hmm. right? Um, 
you know, before we come to an end, I do want to, because I'm more curious, of and course. I hope you don't mind if I ask. No, of course. But you had talked about, you know, going to jail, mm-hmm. right? Um, and the work that you had done before that, mm-hmm. right? What was that like for you from a place of mental health and from a place of vulnerability, if I can say? Of course, of course. In that time frame. That, I mean, just like I mentioned before, it's like I was, I can definitely say my first, because, you know, just for the transparency, you know, it wasn't that I was just in jail. I was in solitary confinement for six months. 23 hours a day in the cell. I mean, if you spend 10 days in, in solitary confinement, that can you know, fuck with you psychologically. So six months, six months, six months, 23 hours in the cell. I did not know that. A lot of people don't know that, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. But the first two, two weeks were tough because, you know, I think we talked about this, that, that PTD post-traumatic mm-hmm. embitterment disorder oh. that I was struggling with that mm-hmm. because I'm looking at it like, how do it, how did I put all this work in? And it, and it wasn't really about, you know, putting the mental health stuff in front of the judge and say, hey, you know what I'm saying, this is what it is, blah, blah, blah. It was like Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for him to completely disregard the work that I put in, I actually kind of gave up on my, you know, mental health. Like I just, I gave up on it because, you know, human nature is nobody else gives a fuck about it. Like why should I? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just even, even no different than, you know, how I resented APN after my first 30 days here. Mm -hmm. Because again, it's, me being naive to this stuff, I'm thinking, oh, if I come 30 days, I'll be the perfect, you know, person after the 30 days. And it was like my whole intention to, you know, of coming here back in uh, back in March of 2021 20, was I need to get equipped because I got a son coming into this world. Mm-hmm. But you learn, you find out quick that it takes more than 30 days to get this shit right. Mm-hmm. So I think one of the things that I did, I definitely got a little more closer to God while I was in that cell because at the end of the day, God teaches us, that God tests us, and he trains us. Yes. And, you know, we talked about testimonials and stuff like that. I told Marcus, you can't have a testimonial without a test. So with that being said, you know. hell of a test. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so I think, you know, as much as awful as that sounds, Miss mm-hmm. T, Marcus, that was probably the best thing that ever happened to me a little six month time out to say, hey, let's reorganize, because that's what mental health is, just reorganization of stuff. Nice. Shifting, shifting of paradigms. You know, I had my, uh, people used to call me the library man in the cell, because I had hella books in there or whatever, but it, it, it was, it was really one of those things where, you know, you had to accept the reality that you were in, and you just kinda had to be aware that, hey, Okay, I'm here. Let's take the accountability. Let's somewhat plan ahead when we get on the outside. And everything, God kind of aligned everything for me. So, and looking back, it's, it's, nobody has really asked me that question. How was jail? What was jail like? Because the biggest you thing. You know me, I'm going to go. Yeah, there. Okay, no, and that's fine. <laughs> because the biggest thing, it, it, you know, it could have been 15 years, it could have been 25 years. Mm-hmm. You know, I got a little slap on the wrist six months, but it really allowed me to really, you know, hey, it it gave me an opportunity to give myself grace. It gave me an opportunity to forgive myself, too, while I was in there. It gave me an opportunity to forgive, you know, the mother of my child, too. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And that allowed me to be in a good space. You know what I'm saying? Just being able to, you know, coexist with her with all things considered. So I think, you know, you probably won't hear a lot of people say this, but I think jail was was, was good for me. Because it was a total realignment, it was a total reorganization mentally, uh, emotionally. So um, it just goes back to what I was saying earlier. I think just despite the turmoil, emotionally, mentally, a lot of good came out of this. So came out of jail, right went right back to the parenting plan. Mm-hmm. Saw my son a month later. You know what I'm saying? So it was just, you know. It was a little bit of God. It was all God. I wouldn't say a little bit. It was all God. It was just all just really trusting yourself and really giving yourself great. Because that's what Miss T, that's what you alluded to to me a lot. That's what my other advocates alluded to me a lot. Like, Zach, give yourself grace. I want to ask you something, Zach, too. Yes, sir. What was it like seeing your son for the first time? Oh, man. It was... 
honestly, it, it was like we didn't skip a beat. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because the most heartbreaking thing, too, was, guys, like, the day before I went to jail, the day before I got sentenced, I got sentenced uh, six months in uh, solitary confinement on the 27th. I literally just dropped my son off from seeing him on the 26th. So imagine losing him, seeing him throughout my bond release, just to have to give him back up again to go to jail. Mm -hmm. That was tough. I'm not gonna lie to you. That was that was tough, tough to do. But just with the strength that God gave me, with the strength of, you know, the inner strength that within myself. Yeah. I was, you know, we just came out smoking, and I think at the end of the day is seeing my son on a consistent basis now has allowed me to, you know, stand on fatherhood. Because again, I don't. I'm not ashamed to say that, you know, there were communities that were dear to me that I lost, whether it was the Down Syndrome community, whether it was the Nashville community. Like, it's it's probably to this point now I probably can't step foot on campus again. And that's okay. That's a, that's a radical acceptance I had to have. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I have fatherhood. I have that to stand on. I have that moral and that, you know, that obligation within itself. Because he was, he was the intent the whole time. That was the only reason I was down in Florida, bro. I was I was down there for my son, nothing else. So to lose the intent, even though the intent was as pure as it was, just to go through what I've been through, that was hard enough within itself. But I'm just glad I'm in this space of, you know, clarity, peace, to be able to say that, just like I mentioned the other day, bro, and you touched on it too, my actions had nothing to do with her. It was simply I wasn't emotionally or mentally equipped nor did I have the skill sets to handle the situation I was in with her. That was it. That was it. But just like you said earlier, Miss T, I'm here now. So. And yes, you are. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> you know, I want to I want to uh, say thank you for sharing that. Yes, ma'am. Um, I think, you know, when we look at recovery, and again, it looks so different for everybody. Mm -hmm. But what I just heard. Um, Zach share with us again you know as we talk about there's always something that gets us here right there's some pivotal point there's some catapulting event whatever it may be right mm -hmm. that gets us here that says I need help right and that recovery piece and what I heard you say what I heard again is a shift of being this man of strength and you found your strength with God, you found your strength, um, you know, in, in that experience, mm -hmm. right? And, and that's where sometimes as bad as the experience may be, mm -hmm. um, we've got the obligation or we've got the opportunity For sure. to find strength in any opportunity, of course. you know, anything that we do. Mm -hmm. And through that, I think the most important thing that I take away from this, and what I see from you today is hope. It's mm. You know, because right. when I met you a few years ago, both of you guys, right, hope wasn't at the top of the priority list, mm -hmm. right? No, because none, pretty much it was none like existed. Yeah. <laughs> it was gone. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't have it. <laughs> it was nothing. Uh, and today you have hope. Mm -hmm. Different journeys, different testimonies, but through your experience, you have found strength and connection. Mm -hmm. Your platform that you use today is your own testimony and sharing with other players, other athletes, other men, mm -hmm. other yeah. individuals, right? Of course. In bringing and speaking about your hope that you have moving forward. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You know, so thank you for, yeah, for sharing that. Yeah, you about to get me choked up, bro. No, nah, no, nah, it's all good, <clears throat> man, because, I mean, it's, I just, you know, I think I mentioned this to you, Marcus. It's like, you know, What's crazy, you know, the situation itself, as far as domestic violence, is it's it's not unique. You mm -hmm. know, what I'm saying it, it, we can say that it happens all the time. But a wise woman told me, I told her this. You know, I, I understand what I did; it was wrong, blah blah blah. And but you know, it's not unique. It happens all the time. But she she told me, Zach, it's unique for you. You know, what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And when she told me that, because she's you know one of my spiritual spiritual beings in my life, my spiritual witches, and you know, she told me that I'm like, yeah. 
because, you know, just even with the piece of recovery, you know, obviously, mm -hmm. you know, getting released from jail, there was a probation that had to be done. I had to go into a, you know, batteries intervention uh, program, which was uh, damn near tougher than jail because they, you know, yeah. that's a whole nother story we'll talk about. But with that also came with the accountability as well, you know. Mm -hmm. And once I was able to kind of stick home on the accountability, that, that allowed me to be in this space of forgiveness, whether it's myself, her, you know, say everybody involved. So, you know, it, it, it took two years, but the space I'm in now was well worth it, you know, mm -hmm. because like you said, Mark, it's, it's never ended. Yeah. I don't think this, you know, my, my transition, my journey, I think this thing is going to go on for, for quite some time, but I'm up for the challenge because anybody that went through what I went through can get through anything, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Trust me. So, but the opportunity to come here and to be able to share my testimony, share my story, what the case might be, it, it wasn't, I wasn't doing this, you know, for the clicks or nothing like that. Cause mm -hmm. with my testimony, with my story, there's a lot of education that comes with it, man. There's a lot of education cause you know, losing time with your son and I'm making up for it now, but there was a lot of moments I wanted to be there, you know what I'm saying? That I miss. And that's what things stung the most. And which is why I'm, really taking on fatherhood like it's the real thing because it's almost i'm gonna dive into you know i'm not sure if you guys are harry potter fans i'm a harry potter fan harry potter fan so it's almost crazy and it kind of relates back to what i was saying about putting stuff on the shelf before you that sacrifice being selfish somewhat you know professor snape made that unbreakable vow mm -hmm, he sure the, did. the unbreakable vow is if you break it you die yeah, yeah. And my unbreakable vow that I made, I made this when I was 10 years old, bro. After experiencing what, you know, my dad not being there, this and that, I made an unbreakable vow to myself. No matter what, how it looks like, no matter what, I'm not gonna leave my son. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna be in a situation where he's asking where I am. Mm -hmm. And that was the vow I made. And even though that vow hindered me a little bit, especially emotionally, somewhat mentally, it was just that's that's the pureness and the intent behind it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm glad you're a Harry Potter fan. Though. Yeah, bro. I Harry wasn't. You My wasn't. wife put me on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Harry Potter's the real and deal. And then I was just at home <laughs> one day. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, 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 <laughs> my wife put me on. I'm sorry. <laughs> Allison Smith. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Shout out. But... <laughs> I'm just saying. But yeah, it, that's that's just I, that's, that's how at, it's related though. That I was related. at home, and I end up. She told me you got to sit and you got to actually watch, and mm -hmm. I watched all of them, and I was like, "Bro, what did I miss when I was 12? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, this is the Ooh. best of the best. Like, come mm -hmm. on, Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, I'm done. Sorry, guys. <laughs> oh my gosh. Sorry, Miss T. We can be goofballs sometimes. Yeah, let's try to bring good. some light into this. Yeah. Well, but that's what recovery is about, right? That we are able to sit here and get as vulnerable as you both did. Mm -hmm. Again, I can't, you know, thank you. I, I honor, you know, being a part of your journey, both of you guys. I honor the relationships that we have today. Yes, ma'am. Um, and, and I honor your candidness and your authenticity to be real today, mm -hmm. right? Yes, because that's how we tackle and break down the walls of stigma. Of course. St or not stigma. <laughs> <laughs> the stigma. <laughs> what time was it? Five? Oh, five See how Keith looked at you just like, hold on. Stigma. St <laughs> mm -hmm. I love it. All right. So thank you both. But before we go, and again, if you can just put it in a nice little box, right? What do you want, what would you want um, people who are watching today, right now, you know, if they're <coughs> sitting there and as they've listened to the two of you share about depression, anxiety, panic, hell, we even talked about mm -hmm. suicide. We talked about what was there. There was a lot there. What would you want somebody to know? What do you want somebody to take away? <sighs> Damn, that's a good question because, you know, being able to unpack a lot, then try to put it back in. 
because again, I you know I don't have a lot of my social. Mm-hmm. You know, we talked about jail, Miss T. My mm-hmm. social skills kind of diminished with people a little <laughs> bit. But one thing I will say, You're doing great. <laughs> one thing I will say, you know, um, you know, to to the people out there watching, in, in regards to my story, how it relates to to people out there as well, it's just just really, really, really dive into yourself when you can. And it can be it can be non-existent because we talked about opportunities. A lot of people don't have a op- the opportunities to to focus on their mental health. You know what I'm saying? Because I got a lot of you know people who are struggling with stuff, but they can't they can't come to APN for 28, 30 days. You know what I'm saying? They got kids, they got bills to pay, stuff like mm-hmm. that. So, mm-hmm. so, so really, I just, I just want to preach to the people out there to to really really look within yourself because that's where the battle is. The battle is looking within yourself and having that recognition to be able to say, I'm not alone and everything's going to be okay. Mm-hmm. And I am loved and everything's going to be okay. And I am strong and everything's going to be okay. Mm-hmm. So, and make sure you have that support system too. I alluded to this yesterday as far as even if you don't uh, utilize the support system, it's always good to, to have just someone text you are you okay how are you doing mm-hmm. you'll be surprised how long that 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 how long um uh, that can go for someone so um yeah i think that's that's just really my little wisdom that i would share because you know there's a lot of people out there who are who are struggling mm-hmm. who are struggling you know what i'm saying on the on the emotional side on the mental health side whatever you know however you you know you want to you know label it for your label it for yourself so just 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 really 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 focus on that inner work Mm -hmm. because i think that's where it's that's where it begins anyway yeah good thank you how about you marcus (laughs) ah you know you know you know (laughs) i just for me if you out there watching you watching this episode you're here at the end you're here at the end for a reason right ask yourself are you truly free? Are you truly free? And what I would say is the more you speak, the more you free yourself. So talking, speaking, being vulnerable about who you are, what you've been through, it doesn't matter. When you put it out there, you lay it on a table, you know, think about the plate that you have and how if you want to be healthy, right, you have your protein, you got your greens, right? You got a shake. Think about your the things that you go through and put it on a plate, right? Um, lay it out there because as these things are comp- compartmentalized in your brain, they haven't left. You haven't had a chance to release them out of your mouth yet. So they're still going to be there. So I would say really think about freeing yourself from the perspective of speaking because as you do that, and you do that, you know, however many times you talk to your therapist or have you do that daily with positive self-talk, whatever it may be, you'll start to notice, um, you'll feel freer, you'll feel lighter, and you'll be able to go about your day a little bit better than you had before. So yeah, that's my take. Nice. Pers- personal freedom. Personal that's, that's, freedom. That's my destination. There we go. I think that's a nice place to land, right? That's and, right. you know, for those of you who have, as Marcus said, you've stayed with us this long, um, keep in mind, please, that by communication, right, by reaching out, by connecting, this is how we begin to tackle and break down the stigma of mental health, that it's okay to talk about this. It's okay to say I need help. It is okay, and it will be okay, mm-hmm. is that personal freedom. So if you're out there struggling, please um, go to website, www.apn.com. Don't be afraid to reach out and ask for help. And thank you for joining. Marcus, once again, thanks for co-hosting here with me. I love it. Appreciate it. Absolutely. I didn't do anything. (laughs) Zach, it was so good to see you you and spend some time with you. And thank you so much for sharing. I just thank you guys for just allow me to have the space to do it so yeah. and uh there's a lot of work that still needs to be done but you know with the the fierce advocacy that you guys are doing that definitely gives me hope mm-hmm. gives me even more strength 
And uh, yeah, I just can't thank you guys enough. There we go. Experience, strength, and hope. Reach out www.apn.com. Thank you. Er, we out. We're out. <laughs> yes.